I'm about to give you a very unpopular opinion. The Insta360 1X2 is a piece of junk! Hey everyone, welcome back to the Chat Perfect channel. My name's Brett, and we make the motorcycle videos that are in motorcycle vlogs here on YouTube. Yeah! Piece of junk, I say, and I'm saying piece of junk. Here I was singing his praises for so long, yada yada yada. But I have come to realize it's just not all it's cracked up to be. It's just not all it's cracked up to be at all. The things that I'm going to talk about with the 360, you know, you could say are my personal opinions, and they really are. Because let me actually kind of backtrack that a little bit. And the camera's been absolutely fine. It's worked absolutely fine. There's not been an issue with it that I could really come to think of. Other than I had a memory card issue. Which was not really the camera's fault. That was my memory card. So in all honesty the 360 has been a really good camera. However. However. The quality of said 360 camera is just not very good. Ugh, it's hideous! There's a lot of features missing on the Insta360 that I really wish, I wish they were there. Simple as that. And so I am going to give you my rundown as far as why I am no longer going to use the Insta360 1X2 on my standard moto vlogs. The first reason is just boils down to image quality. Now I will post a picture that I ran a few weeks ago of me running the Insta360 as the at me camera. So the camera that I have on my handlebars. And you can see when I zoom in on the photo that there's a lot of distortion and pixelation maybe distortion is not the best word it's not distorted but it's, it's definitely not sharp and crisp and now let's just go ahead and do a screen grab from the gopro 8 and this is being captured in a 4k 60 frames per second and you can just see just how much sharper the lines of like my helmet are and me are it's just it's it's a night and day difference and honestly, it's, it's enough to where I, I hated adding 360 footage to my moto vlogs. Essentially what would happen with the... Whoa! Shit! Wow! <laughs> oh, wow. Essentially what would happen with the Insta360 camera when I would mesh it with the GoPro was one, I had to lower the frames per second on my GoPro. Now I have done a couple of different comparisons on the GoPro shooting at 24 frames per second versus 60 and you know which one you like better, etc. etc. Again, that's gonna be a personal opinion. But you do have to shoot at a lower frames per second, so 24-ish uh, to match the 360. I really like the fluidity of 60 frames per second. I think you could do more with it. You could do more potential editing with 60 frames per second because essentially you're getting over two times the data as you're recording. So that was one of the things I don't like is just the, the image quality. The 360 will shoot in 5.7K, but what you need to think about with that 5.7K is that it's 5.7k for both cameras to make the 360 degree image. What that equates to is a lot of times when you're fishing around trying to get that image that is just right for where you have placed the camera, you're, you're lucky if you're at 1080. A lot of times you end up being a lot less than that because if you don't zoom it out far enough you're not going to get a clear picture or if you zoom it out too far you end up with like a 
small world, very distorted picture. Just you know, not for me. Just not for me. So needless to say, the image quality and the frames per second is the main reason that I am going back to just the two camera GoPro Hero 8 setup. Now I never used audio or anything of that nature with 360 camera. I always run my external mics, so it's not literally a big deal that the audio on it is what it is. And so the audio actually what ends up getting recorded on the 360 camera. It does filter out a lot of wind noise, but it's not usable. So that's another thing is you can buy an adapter just like you can for the GoPro uh, media mods, etc, etc. But it's really just kind of meh. You're not going to run the audio necessarily to it because when you start running the audio cable to it as well, well then you might get stuff in the picture. Oh no, then that shot's completely ruined. The next thing I didn't care for with the 360 is just the editing itself. The 360, when it came out, was cool. You got the small world. You got, you know, this kind of cool. You could pan and zoom, pan and zoom, which, you know, has its purposes, I guess you could say. But because the audio from what I'm talking about to the video is always going to be not in sync until I actually start working with it in post-production. It's really hard to say, now if you look over here to the right, you'll see this. It's just, it's not easy to do inside of their software. Now, if they would include a way in their software where I could add my own audio track on top of the Insta360 video that's in there, that would really allow for a lot easier editing However, because it is not in there, it gets kind of a demerit for me on that front. So what I ended up using the editing for was I basically just, it ended up being like I had two more GoPros is what I would end up doing because I would have it stationary on my bike, like on the Kawasaki down here off the crash guard. And then if it was on anywhere else, you know, it, it was just, it was basically, just two more at me shots and they were stationary and then going back to the quality thing they were coming in at less than 1080p so here i am mixing awesome 4k footage with choppy 1080p footage just not for me so those are the reasons of quality and editing that i didn't like about the camera itself now some of those things could end up being fixed with a firmware update or some software updates. But the recording at only 24 frames per second and only at 5.7 for the entire image, that's not going to change. That's just how the camera is built. So exo facto, I am dropping it from the Moto Vlog. Now there's another reason that I am dropping it from the Moto Vlog as well. Because I could just go out and get a couple more GoPro 8s to replace it. But for a Moto Vlog such as what we're doing here today, I really don't see the need anymore. At first I thought it was pretty cool, you know, I could create some a little bit more scenic Moto Vlog and stuff like that, but in all honesty, with the time I have right now, I just need simplistic Moto Vlogs. I just need my Moto Vlog to basically say, Hey, I'm shooting the camera this way, and hey, look back at me this way. That's all I need. That's all I ever should have needed. For Motovlog, it just, you know, these are simple things. The, the camera still will be of use to me when I want to make something of a little bit more cinematic, or I want to actually have some shots of me riding and there's no one to film for me. I'm not going to say that the camera is not going to be used or it's completely worthless. It's not. It's just not what I need it to be for a moto vlog. So with that being said, you know, go ahead and drop your comments below. Do you guys think Insta360 quality is eh? And are you kind of over all the gimmicky hype of it between all the moving the camera around? Because you know what? I kind of am at this point. 
But with that being said, go ahead and drop your comments below. And as always, I will catch you on the next Dark Side as this is the way. Check for us in the next one. Later!